Welcome back to Bell, Ohio, everybody. It's a rainy day in central Ohio, and I'm dealing with a bit of a calf injury. So today we're back in the shop, and I'm going to try to bring you into my madness to show you a few of the things that I'm trying to work out on my Quintana Roo triathlon bike. Over the course of the past few years, I've been able to get a little bit faster every year, and I think that's due to improvements in my aero position and also my fitness. The Blue Streak time trial is a 10-mile time trial in Dayton, Ohio at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and it's a good way to compare your current efforts to your previous efforts since it's nice and flat, conditions are uh, typically um, pretty uniform. I recently uploaded a video of my current time trial position to a Facebook forum, time trialing positions, and generally got pretty good feedback. One suggestion that somebody made, though, is that since my pursuit bars or my bullhorns have a little bit of an upward angle at the ends, they suggested that I try to get a flat pursuit bar so that my brake levers would actually not angle downward, but angle back toward the bike. Obviously, there are reasons with handling why you might want to have upturned bar ends descending um, at high speeds and hitting the brakes, you want to have a little bit of force into the palm of your hands in that angled position just for a secure grip. That really doesn't come into play too much where most of the uh, courses that I race are pretty flat. So I decided to take on the challenge of finding a new uh, pursuit bar that was going to have a flat brake hood to them um, so that I could get a little bit better aerodynamic performance. So finding the ideal pursuit bar that was going to match up and be compatible with my shifters and also my existing aero bars was a bit of a challenge. What I noticed was that most bars really weren't long enough here where if I chopped the ends, I was still going to have enough space to hold my hands. This is the closest that I could get to. It's a fixation uh, bullhorn. But the problem with this is that they're 40 centimeters wide. I was looking for something a little bit more narrow, and I also wanted to be able to route the brake cables, the brake housings, in through the bar. Uh, a very rudimentary Google search told me that actually drill, drilling an alloy bar was going to be a very bad idea. So while this was close, it didn't quite suit my needs. So over at Franklinton Cycle Works, I was able to find an older Synchros bar that is actually 36 uh, centimeters wide. It's going to give me a really narrow position when I actually have to be on the pursuit bars, but that's only going to be for high speed corners in the first five to ten seconds of the race anyway. The rest of that time, the bar is just hanging out there in the wind, picking up extra drag, and that's something I wanted to avoid. So, some advantages that this bar has to offer is that it's already drilled uh, for internal routing of the brake cables. There's going to be enough space on that pursuit bar for my hand, even when I chop these angled ends to them. And then the other major advantage, I've had these TRP brake levers sticking around for a while. They're nice and streamlined, nice and arrow, and the external diameter here is actually going to mate perfectly with the internal um, of this Synchros bar. I think when I do chop that, you know, remaining three centimeters off the end, I'm going to have a pretty good brake position, even though it's not going to give me the ergonomics of being angled. So let's talk about how I'm going to plan to chop these down. One of the considerations for chopping down that angled portion of this bar, I plan to use a hacksaw, but I want it to be a perfect perpendicular angle um, to the pursuit bar portion. So I figured what I can do is mark off on either side using a flat plane where that angle begins and then putting a fat zip tie there that's going to give me that perpendicular cut. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm sure that I can use a file to file off any little bits of burr that I have left and to make that a nice um, perpendicular angle. So this is the existing cockpit, and these are the bars that I'm going to replace with these newer Synchros bars. They've done really well for me. They're already pretty narrow at 40 centimeters wide. This is that brake lever that dangles out vertically. That's what I'm looking to eliminate. One other issue that I've been presented with is that over the years of putting a longer and longer stem to optimize my aero position is I've actually run out of length uh, with my front derailleur uh, cable housing here. It no longer is long enough to give me enough rotation to get a full turn off to the right. So I figure as long as I'm replacing these bars, I'm going to go ahead and replace all the cable housings and all the cables. They're all looking fairly straightforward. I'm a little bit intimidated by needing to uh, route these internally. 
the one that I'm most concerned about is how this front derailleur cable exits the frame and doesn't have any visible housing. I'm not sure what's waiting for me inside when I try to pull the cable uh, and pull this brake housing because I'm afraid of trying to fish that through. That's going to be nearly impossible unless there's any sort of internal guide. My crazy plan is, is going to be to try to work backward. I'm going to try to snip the end, um, the base of this cable, so that I can pull the housing out around it, feed the new housing in, pull the old cable, and then put the new cable in, kind of working backward. And I think that's going to guide me to that teeny tiny uh, little opening there. And if nothing else, I can show you how to do this the wrong way so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I'm about to make. So laying the bars along this level, it's pretty easy to see where that upward angle begins. That's where I'm going to aim to place my fat zip tie so that I can see where to make the cut. I'm going to mark that as symmetrically as I can, but a millimeter here or two shouldn't matter too much, except that it'll keep me up at night. So I'm going to try to do that carefully, and uh, we'll see how we do. <clears throat> so using that little box cutter, I was able to scratch into the anodizing. Um, I used the outside of the zip tie back to that opening for the cable housing, and I've got 72 millimeters on this side. I've got 72 millimeters on this side, so I think we're ready to cut. So fast forward a couple days and I actually had to order a new hacksaw blade that would be appropriate for like an aluminum alloy. I only have this Park Tool specific carbon fiber cutting hacksaw blade um, that I had used to chop down a seat post. I guess when I removed my alloy cutting blade I must have tossed it just thinking that the teeth were too worn out. So uh, a couple days forward here but let's go ahead and see if we can cut. So I suppose an unofficial assessment of how even, uh, evenly I cut that is to just compare the two sawed off pieces and it's almost perfect. Um, I would say good enough for me. I do feel that I'm going to have to file them down just to remove a little bit of burring so maybe I'll take that. I guess it was the right side. It took just a touch more off so maybe I can file that left side down a little extra but that's good enough for me, and what I'm happy to see is that it's still definitely enough room for my hand, especially when I get that lever on there. detail that I probably glossed over. Why was I so concerned about having internally routed cables? Um, and the answer is because the cable is going to have to run internally through that handle, so I needed a, a spot for it to exit. So it's not really going to run uh, internally completely the whole time, but it did need a spot to exit a little further up the base bar. So this is my current cockpit. And this base bar has a brake lever where the housing 
runs underneath the bar. So I wasn't going to be able to use um, this particular bar with these more aerodynamic TRP brake levers because I just wasn't going to have a spot to route that cable to actually get it back into the brake. So here's where I got to start taking things apart and I'm just going to have to be careful that I do it in the right order so that any cable or cable housing that I remove, I'll still be able to run it back without the aid of any sort of internal guide. One thing I want to mark before we do this is the angle of my uh, aero bar and my pad so that I can get it back to the same angle uh, after it's all set up. And maybe 24% there. The top's telling me about 37. So I've got most everything exposed at this point in my game plan. We'll look at the uh, rear brake as a for instance. I've got the cable, I've got the housing routed internally to the frame here. So I want to replace both. I think what I can do is take this cable out, disconnect it, um, pull it out of pull it out of the brake, and then pull the housing out back this way and then run the housing back up the old cable, back to the lever, then pull the cable, and then put the new cable in. So, working backward, uh, let's see how it works out. Oh, it's working, but is that ferrule gonna get by? No! Oh no. The ferrule isn't going to allow that to get through. Well, I don't have to take it off. Then I, I could just take that off and then I can pull it through. Okay. We're okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, man. Okay, we're out. Save that ferrule. So, still have the cable running through. The new housing goes back up through there. Except that I have to change this bar. Yeah, I'm doing this all out of order. This is all wrong. <laughs> all right, so the new base bar is on and it looks narrow. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Uh, cables are disconnected from the brakes. I'm gonna take the aero bars off this base bar and then we'll see what makes sense as far as our next step. So this is definitely crunch time. I'm gonna snip the top here, that anchor, so that I can pull the housing away. This is what we've not, got to not lose track of this one here. But once I snip that, pull it through, then I think I can pull the housing out and then thread the new housing back down. That's the plan anyway. As it is now, the bike's unrideable, <laughs> literally. But even before, it was unrideable since I couldn't make more than a half turn to the right. So this is just necessary. And if I have to bail and go to the bike shop, that's fine. Okay, so I got the housing pulled out. Interesting to see that this side doesn't have a ferrule on the end. Um, but in any event, this is the cable in question here that's going to have to be, I don't know, a good inch and a half longer. And I can't see if there's any kind of guide down there, but... We're just gonna follow this cable all the way down. Let's see how we do. So I think it's working. Pushing the housing through, 
and I think I'm coming up the cable. Oh man. I'm so happy that worked. <laughs> All right, it's way too long right now, but I'll cut it afterward. This is the one that's been keeping me up at night. So we'll see what happens here. And I just don't know but it feels like it's really up against something because it's, it's just not going to come up. It's not going to actually come out of the frame, so I'm going to cross my fingers. I suppose we can test it. Well, I can't. of the old shifter cable that should be long enough oh ta-da I'm happy bam okay guys my brain's fried. It actually worked though. So here we go. I've got the new base bar in a nice parallel to the ground position. I've got those brake levers running back nearly parallel to them as well. I got all the housings in, 37 centimeters wide. Everything's run to the back. I've got super long cables, so nothing's uh, properly tuned up or even attached at the moment, but that's about all I can handle for now. Um, so what am I hoping to get out of this? Again, a little bit better aerodynamic position, uh, the literal ability to turn my bike to the right during a race, which might come in handy. And then I think honestly the bike hadn't had new housing since it was first put together in 2011. I know I've done new cables once, but some fresh housings wouldn't hurt for a little bit crisper performance. Um, so yeah, I expect these aren't going to be as ergonomic in general, but I'll be on them for such a short amount of time. It's probably not going to matter. Anyway, hopefully the next time you guys see this, uh, it's going to be all taped up and ready to go.